Thank you, Troy. And uh, yeah, so uh, I am EO of the uh, Clare Valley Wine and Grape Association. And we're a reasonably uh, new body formed back in uh, J uh, July, sorry, last year. And how does this work? <laughs> no? Perfect. So we had two, basically two organisations, uh, the Clare Valley Wine Makers and the Clare Valley Wine Grape Growers Association. And um, they've both been operating for quite some time, as you can see, 1975 for the wine makers and 2000 for the grape growers. And we decided that um, uh, it was time to consider bringing these two organisations together. So we, we looked at the common opportunities that we both uh, we both had and what we were both working to. And we basically decided that we, we were both on the same track with trying to protect our reputation, um, working for our members, because we are a member-based uh, association, and uh, foster and develop the Clare Valley Wine region and promote um, and the promotion of environmentally and economically sustainably um, high wine growing production for our region. Um, we also looked at the possibility of, and we've talked about collaboration, so um, certainly there was opportunity for collaboration um, with wine tourism through uh, increasing our marketing uh, opportunities. So some of the common, sorry, it feels like this is up my nose, but anyway. So some of the common um, and competing grounds. So there were uh, overlapping um, scenarios I guess with both uh, industries and um, we had independent growers, winemakers who were also growers um, so there was that overlap there but often competing int interests like grape growing pricing um, and believed in the, uh, that the combined entity would be a stronger influence and in setting strategic priorities for our region. So in saying that we decided amalgamation was the way to go and to become a lead entity in our region. So just a little bit of background and shared challenges that we, we came across. Um, so competing in the marketplace, the wine industry is very, very difficult at the moment. And there's so many brands out there and, you know, we are all competing for that market share, both domestically, um, not just in our region, but domestically and internationally. Water is definitely um, a huge issue for a lot of wine growing regions and Clare Valley is no different. So we um, felt that that was one of the driving forces as well for the amalgamation process. Um, we do have a lack of corporates in our region. So we are all family owned um, and family invested businesses. And um, you know they, the, the lack of corporates does prove a challenge in that they have a larger pool of resources that, that um, you know, our association could draw on. And our resources that we did have were all voluntary and already working in smaller businesses and they weren't being paid by our industry and so it was forming, uh, causing a bit of a uh, problem with actually act being able to get activity done and to, to actually drive the Clare Valley wine industry. We were run on committees um, and, again, all voluntary and so that, again, was a challenging thing. Um, the size of our business I just mentioned are all family owned, very small. We have a few large ones. Ollie mentioned Taylor's. Um, we've got Accolade in the region as our really our only uh, corporate. And the other challenge has been over the past uh, has been the lack of enthusiasm from the members to actually, um, I guess, drive the industry. I guess they were all feeling very tired from being um, involved and having to run their own business as well as having to you know, assist and drive the, um, the, the industry from the Clare Valley. So it led to shared opportunities if we were to amalgamate and it, it's given us, uh, I guess, the, to be able to grow the pie. So more sales, more great, sa more great sales to our wineries, to our external buyers as well from other regions who, who take Clare fruit. Um, and leading into that, increasing the supply and demand for clear fruit. Um, other, uh, other things that we've identified were to um, increase, the, increase the regional's potential in industry growth. So we're looking at um, 
things like plantable area that we already have and what areas of the Clare Valley could be planted to actually grow our region as a, a more profitable region. Um, tourism and visitation is really high on, on well, was on really high agenda for both associations and they, um, and it still is, and it's something that we are desperately looking at, at how, how to drive that tourism uh, industry to our region and uh, put more people through our cellar doors, more people drinking our wine, and, and obviously then creating that supply and demand chain. So some of the, some of the common and unique high-level assets, um, the Clare Valley wine region, I don't know if anybody's been to Clare, other than most people I know in the region that live in Clare, like Deb. <laughs> um, we, you know, we're, we're quite diverse, we're family owned, and I think that we are the quintessential Australian uh, region. We have agriculture, we have viticulture, we have tourism, we have food. So we, uh, you know, we, we, we are pretty much a one-stop shop for anybody who wants uh, an experience in agriculture, food and wine. We have cellar doors, we have our ancient soils. Um, we've just had a, recently embarked on a, um, a geological project which has identified our whole geological aspect of the Clare Valley and we're just going through stage two of that in reviewing what's been done and where we can use that in marketing collateral. Um, we have some of the oldest wine growing um, businesses like the Seven Hills Cellars. They were the first to plant vines in the Clare Valley and they grew uh, grapes to make sacramental wine to, um, to distribute through the whole of Australia and still do so as well as internationally. We do have some amazing um, wines through, listed through the Langton's uh, classification. I don't know if anybody knows about that, but it's pretty well recognised that if you're on the Langton's classification that you must be a good wine. And most of our um, award-winning wines on that classification are red wines. And so Clare Valley is known for Riesling pretty well, but um, we have some amazing red wines that are coming out of that region. And we're just about to embark on uh, a project to, uh, to drive that, uh, I guess, that awareness of our red wines. The Clare Valley also is a great proximity to the Flinders Ranges and we often call ourselves the gateway to the Flinders. Um, however, the traffic tends to get diverted through uh, Port Wakefield Road, up that boring highway to Port Augusta and, and out that way. So if you're ever travelling to the Flinders, please come through the Clare Valley. So what I'm here to talk about is obviously the coming together of our two associations. We've had a number of attempts at it, um, hasn't hasn't worked uh, in previous years for a number of reasons. You know, the growers uh, felt that they might lose their identity if they did amalgamate, be swallowed up by us winemakers, um, and the fear of being taken over by a winemaker association. Um, at the time, um, you know, members didn't think that they had the time or the interest to actually make it work because we were having to drive from within our own associations. And, you know, convincing the winemakers and grape growers to support the introduction of a wine industry levy, which most regions other than Coonawarra have, and that is their main form of revenue um, for uh, driving marketing and, and uh, technology and research and development within their associations. So we decided at that time that we would introduce the wine industry fund and not look at the amalgamation at that point. And that was about 10 years ago. So it's taken us that long, and this attempt has been the third attempt, and that took two years to, to come to fruition. Um, and we decided that doing nothing now was not going to be an option and that we needed to, to make this happen. So we investigated and appointed an independent facilitator to actually do the work for us because we'd identified that you know, we just didn't have the resources or the time or the energy to do it. And we had a, an amazing support from the next generation coming through, albeit very small. Um, we, you know, we've got family-owned businesses who their daughters, their sons are all coming up through the, through the industry, like the Barrys with uh, Jim Barry Wines with the Barry Boys and Mitchells with the Mitchell uh, clan. And you've got Taylors being a family-owned business. Um, I'm not sure what the secession plan will be there, but um, I listened to Justin speak at the Wine Communicators uh, China Summit last week and uh, he was very passionate about 
bringing through that succession planning um, process for, for the business. So that was pretty much attempt three and we've, we've actually made it. We've been amalgamated since July and um, some of the difficulties through the whole process, again, have been the member engagement, uh, growers concerned about losing their voice, um, conflicting priorities with viticulture versus marketing. So, you know, what was this new association? What, what track was it going to take? Was it going to be, you know, viticultural technology, research and development, or were we going to be focusing major predominantly on marketing the region and driving more tourism to the region and more awareness of the Clare Valley and our wine? So the growers um, identified that they were keen for a lot of the, the focus to be on marketing, and we've heard about you know, other marketing channels from, from Will and, and the other speakers. And so it's about creating that collaborative approach now to the marketing process. Some of the successes we've had just in the last eight months, um, our partnerships with, with um, other industry bodies like Wine Australia, PERSA, South Australian Wine Industry Association, um, Winemakers Federation, now AGWA, um, have all really elevated. So we have some great relationship, relationships with those organisations now that we've never had in the, in the past. So I think one uh, message that I can, um, I guess, express to you guys is that the power of a unit, unified and a unity reg, unified region is extremely uh, powerful because we have noticed just in the last eight months, the successes that we've been able to get out of being a unified body. We've had amazing um, grant support because of it as well through Wine Australia, PERSA and um, now with the increased levies of our, for our wine industry, now in year two, um, we have some serious revenue that we can actually um, be a serious wine industry. So what's driven the success? Definitely the goals um, that, the, that both organisations had, um, being, being uh, transparent to all of our members and our industry, and the long-term ambition to be known as a premium wine producing area. Some of our key stakeholder champions have also come on board um, with, uh, with literally with our board, like Taylors and Grossets, Pikes, we all have some, we have some terrific uh, board members um, that, that sit on uh, from those companies. We've also saw some uh, special skilled board members from, that are not industry related. Um, and we have um, Bianca Jennings here today, who is one of our board members and another lady called Tori Somerville, who has, is specialist in marketing. So they were the skills that we felt the board uh, lacked and we needed to go and source those. So the first step upon amalgamation was to do a strategic plan and we engaged Troy Forrest to be an independent facilitator to run that process. And we now as an association, combined association, have some really clear goals and, and strategies in place to, to drive our industry forward. So what's gonna happen in the next 12 months? Um, we're going to be focusing on, on turning this good plan that uh, Troy has done for us uh, into results. Um, we're going to stay focused and we need to stay focused and prioritise our efforts. We need to keep that member enthusiasm and engagement very high and we've in, increased our, in, um, I guess, our member communication quite significantly with um, the introduction of some social media and uh, ED, regular EDMs that we are producing. So that communication um, from Danielle this afternoon was, is, is certainly important as well. And some of the lessons that we've learned out of this whole process is that um, we, again, do need to keep that high level of member engagement. We need to provide ongoing tangible benefits to all of our members. We sort of need to prove ourselves that this amalgamation was worthwhile to our membership. And success happens when both parties have a shared goal. And I think we do have the shared goal now that um, we've gone through that whole process. And like I said, it took two years to, to get to where we are. 
Um, balancing historic family studies uh, stories, sorry, with new, young and dynamic members. We have some great young and up and coming winemakers and wine brands in the region and putting them alongside our, I guess, our icon uh, brands like Jim Barry Wines, Taylors, um, and telling them, then telling their stories, but also the younger winemakers coming through and great growers coming through telling their stories as well. It's, it's, it's absolutely fantastic. And finally, I would like to invite everybody to come to the Clare Valley, if you haven't already been there, take a trip and, uh, and come and visit us. We have everything on offer. Um, we have great food. We have great wine. You can go and visit the canola fields and you can go and see the Bungaree Station and the Working Sheep Station and you can go on uh, Pankara um, Farm and, and pick lentils, I suppose. Um, if you choose to. So we do have all of that available in the Clare Valley. Um, we're not just wine, food and, and tourism. We, we have some really great major events in the region uh, with our Gourmet Weekend coming up, um, Shakespeare in the Vines. So, you know, we, we are a one-stop shop really for all your tourism needs. And I think that's it, but I'm just going to say something um, I heard the other day, or somebody told me the other day, that um, I'm not a Crows supporter, so don't think that I am. But the if you follow the <laughs> if you follow the um, Adelaide Crows women's team, I believe when they first formed, they had um, members that were based in Darwin and members that were or players that were based in Darwin and players that were based in in Adelaide. They trained separately and then came together to actually play the match on the set on the weekend. And the last two years they've been doing that. Now, I don't know what ratio players are in Darwin and, and are in Adelaide now, but I guess what I'm leading to is they did have success this year with actually winning their women's grand final. So thank you.